you, you come up with this ingenious idea for your next business, uh, Flat Out Heels. Yeah. Can you talk to us about how that idea was conceived? What is Flat Out Heels? Why you decided to, to go into this area? Because it's, it's not tech. It is, it is not consulting. You're now in the product business. How did it come into play? Again, in my life, I'm looking back at my life and see how everything played out. Everything really happened for a reason and it all comes together. So for me having Urban Star doing events, promotions, then I go to have V1 Consulting Group, consulting, um, marketing and digital marketing. It led me to, I moved to Atlanta when the recession hit because Columbus was under recession and I was losing clients. They, they First thing people do, which is insane, when they start losing money, they cut the marketing budget. That is ridiculous. You need the marketing budget before you need anything else because you need customers. But anyway, right. they cut the marketing budget, which meant me. And so I'm like, where can I go that's recession proof? What industries are recession proof? We have a couple, but the two I really focused on was sports and entertainment. They're recession proof. People are gonna still go out, have drinks. They're gonna still do their sports regardless of what's going on in the economy. We've seen this over and over again. And so I moved to Atlanta because they had these things, sports and entertainment, and I could be a consultant down there, which led me to working with athletes and entertainers for five years. And I worked with them on their events. I did celebrity weekends, nonprofit events, marketing, websites, just all kinds of turnkey consulting, which led me to lots of parties, clubs, and you know Atlanta, so the <laughs> full run, we have seen it all. But most importantly, I've seen women walking around barefoot at the, at the table, at the section, popping bottles with their shoes off, you know, walking outside after the club, dirty feet, all these things. And of course, I'm out and my feet hurt. And I thought to myself, we need some kind of a shoe that women can carry with us in our purse or, you know, in our car glove box so that we can put them on when our feet hurt in heels. This is before I was like into the conference and business traveling life as a, as a professional like I am now. So it was all motivated by like clubs and parties. And, you know, I fished the idea around and people were like, yeah, I would love some shoes I could put in my purse. I think it's a great idea. And I'm like, you know, well, how do we get them to women when their feet hurt the most? What is the best distribution channel? I'm always like, that's how I think, like, what can I do to disrupt things? So even though it wasn't tech, I'm always thinking about innovation. What's next? What is a dif differentiator? Again, with my career before, my tech skills differentiated me in the newsroom. How can I differentiate my products, which are shoes, from everybody else's shoes? I'll make them rollable, foldable, machine washable, and I'll put them in vending machines so that when you're at the club or at the airport or at the concert, you can buy some flats in a machine. Stop that there for one second. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry to interject. Did this idea exist? Did anybody have this on the market at the time? I found a company that had a similar idea in the UK, but I didn't see anything anywhere else. They had like two machines out. And I actually contacted them and said, listen, I want to do what you're doing. Can you work with me? I'm in the U.S. I will be a distributor for you. And they quoted me a price of $5 a pair. And they were retailing for 20 And my business brain kicked in like, their margins aren't the best. Because if I'm buying them for 5 I got to ship them over here. Let's say at $2 a pair or $2, $7, get them here, put them in a the warehouse, pay rent, pay to put them on the site, pay for shipping, you know, all the costs, my margin's probably $2. How can I get them down lower? I can make my own. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to go to China and manufacture my own. Now, it sounded real easy when I said that. It ain't. But that's what I did. I said, you know what? I don't want to I don't want to make hardly no money and hustle somebody else's brand. I'm going to start my own brand, and that's what I did. Okay. What was the initial investment like? How long did it take to go from prototype to you actually have a real roll-up foldable shoe in hand ready to sell? It took me four months. And that's rare. And that's, again... That's very fast. Very fast. And it was because I relied on my network. Now, keep in mind, I've already been an entrepreneur at this point 10 years. This was in 2011 when I started Flat Out. Mm -hmm. So I had a very popular name with people that go out, athletes, entertainers, um, my college peers, they were, they seen what I was doing. They would be at my events, I used my website, so they trusted me. So when I went to them, my athlete clients, entertainer clients, and my peers and said, listen, 
I want to start another business. I had a business plan written up. They actually invested. And I raised 250000 from people that I know, Black people that I know, Black high, worth, high net worth individuals. Wow. Okay, so, stop there for a second. I want to make sure, I want to highlight this. You got this idea. You draw up your business plan. You source materials where I can get this manufactured. Do all of your due diligence. I did all of that. You tell me at that point, you're able to tap into your network, which again goes to something I preach all the time. There are no experiences that are ever wasted. Yeah. Anything you go through in life, you can best believe at some point it's going to serve a purpose yep. for you. So for you, you're doing promotion, you're doing marketing, you're working with some of these high net worth individuals anyway, just not in this capacity. Right. So when you go to them, was it was it heavy lifting? Was it a, a hard sales pitch? It How did you? Be, that's a lot of money. And a lot of the money. fact that you said it wasn't you got it from because, black and brown people. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It wasn't because I had already established credibility with them. I already was a good steward of their money. They were my clients. So they seen me taking their money, using it, like I said, giving them their return, managing money well, managing business. They seen me. So that that was helpful to me. And, you know, they it was not hard. I was I didn't looking back. It's surprising because this is 2011. You know, I'm a black woman and I'm trying to raise money for shoes. But yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they just, they, just, just for clarity, just for context, 2011, we were still in the middle of a major recession. This, this is this is 08, 09, 10, 11, like this is not a period where you would think most people would part with their money easily. But go ahead. But again, we talk about recession proof. If you're an athlete, you're still getting your check, don't matter. If you're an entertainer, you're still getting your check, don't matter. So I knew I had to get into those networks. Again, that was, I feel like it was a blessing. It was source, it was that inner voice saying, Dawn, go down here, do events and promotions down here, it will, you'll see later. It's like, it's like faith. You, you know, faith is a confidence in things you cannot see. And everybody say they have faith, but when it's time to exercise faith, they get scared. Talk that talk, Dawn. You know, so it's like when you walk on faith, it really means blindly taking action, not knowing what the outcome will be, but trusting that it's for your greatest good. And that's how I live my life. And that's what happened. You know, I, I was doing a lot of things in between, obviously, like, doing hustles, trying to make money, working the door at the club, just building my network. I worked the VIP door of the club in Atlanta, a couple of popular clubs, built my network, just very intentional, building my network, being a person of integrity, being friendly, being, you know, all these things that I didn't really realize what I would need these people for. But the key is you all, you're supposed to build relationships when you don't need them. You don't need nothing. You just build them relationships. It could be literally ended up being 10 years before I asked them for anything. So that's how it happened with my investors. They knew me for 10 years from college or from several years of working with me and they believed in me. And again, people always say black people don't support each other. That's not my life story. I don't understand that. I've always got support from black people, always. I've never had a black person like try to sabotage me or in business or do, I've just never experienced that. We, we are very supportive of one another and I, you know, I, I'm grateful for them. I wouldn't be here without them. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.